Hello and welcome to Travel Story. I'm Jesse Day. Hi, I'm Sammy, and once again we are joined by our special travel mentor. Please welcome Professor Meacham. Hello, Professor. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Daniel Meacham. I'm an English professor at Sejong University, and I've been in Korea for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, we're very happy to have someone with such experience <laughs> in Korea here with us on the show today. That's awesome. And today's theme is second chapter in life. That's right. Yeah, and my own second chapter in life definitely began when I first moved to Korea. Mm, so, right. I'm, But I'm very curious what the third chapter might be someday. Oh, yeah, I'm curious too. <laughs> and how about you, Professor? <laughs> Well, chapter one for me was when I was admitted as a professor at Fort Hay State University in, in the America. United States. Uh, so I really enjoyed that chapter. But in all honesty, my second chapter in life has been here in Korea. When I married my wife, it started a whole new saga. Oh. I really have enjoyed all the different experiences that I've had with my wife and meeting different challenges here in Korea. They've just been wonderful. I, I truly have enjoyed chapter two. Yeah, how did that exactly start though? How did you meet your wife? Well, I met my wife by accident of all things. Oh, okay. I, I just happened, I uh, was sent overseas to Taiwan mm -hmm. by my university to work with the sister school. Then they sent me to Tokyo uh, for a short time uh, with another possible sister school. And when I was there, I met a man who had a university here. Mm -hmm. He asked me to come and teach his professors in a two-week seminar. So I came, and one of the professors that I was teaching introduced me to my future wife. Oh. And from then on, it was... So, Back and forth. So I just, <laughs> since then, it's been going on. So Taiwan to Tokyo to Korea. So right. your romance took quite a long course around the world. It seemed to be, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's great. Why don't we check in today to see today's travelers and how they're starting their second chapter in life thanks to traveling in Korea. I love Busan for a lot of reasons. I, I think it's a very interesting and charming city. Um, it is a big city, but for me, it still feels like a small town. I, I, I can walk through a local marketplace and it's probably the same as it was 40 or 50 years ago. And I can walk one block and I'll see a very modern building. When you move to a new place, it's a chance to meet new people. I first came to this city in 1996, and here I met someone very special. First impression, I, I thought she was beautiful and had a very interesting personality. She seemed friendly and talked to everybody. And that's a quality I admire. <laughs> and I think the first thing I said was she's beautiful. And yeah, that, that attracted me as well. <laughs> Back then, she was running a cafe. Even though I wasn't much of a coffee drinker, I visited the place every day to see her. She always welcomed me warmly. As we got to spend more and more time together, I grew fond of Busan. After one year of dating, we tied the knot. My parents welcomed her into our family with open arms, as though they were old friends. Busan brought us together, but music was what truly enriched our relationship. So realistic. Hmm. 
My wife is my most ardent fan. Music in my life, um, it's, it's many things. Um, when I first started playing, it, it, was, it, was a, it was just a wonder. It was something that I didn't understand and I just wanted to be a part of it. And then uh, maybe when I was a teenager, it was kind of an escape from just pressures of being a teenager. And now, you know, the last 20 years or so, it, it's just been, it's been a way of, um, socializable. It worked and it was a complete surprise. Busan is a city with a thousand faces. When the sun goes down, the rhythm of this bustling city changes too. I love the nights of Busan. This is my favorite club. It never fails to inspire me. Here, there's endless music, liquor, and stories. This is where I enjoy my music life with some awesome friends I've made. Um, so we're kind of a, an original rock band. Uh, we've been playing for five or six years, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Uh, Patrick is the best violinist ever, living or dead. He's a virtuoso. I don't know how he does it. It's truly amazing and a sight to behold that you don't want to miss, so make sure you stay tuned. Uh, I've been playing with these guys for about nine months and I've got the pleasure of playing with Patrick about six or seven times. It's always been fun. He's a great player and he's a really nice guy. He's been very nice to me and very nice to my friends here, so I can't wait. It's going to be a good night. These guys, these guys are the best. Can't wait. Art. and exciting because I can tell the, the people when they love Patrick's music I can say that's my husband sometimes when I go to see a concert um, some people just talk about Patrick and I can look at like, listen that violin player and I, I get to hear that well because I'm I'm with them and in the audience so makes me really proud and love his music. about the genuine beauty of Korea, Busan is the place to be. This city with an emerald sea, good music, and warm-hearted people is my second hometown.
Well, I myself have been to Busan many times for filmings, mm -hmm. but because I was working, I didn't really get a big chance to go and explore everything that Busan had to offer. And seeing from that video, it sure does have a lot there. I, I like the vibrant uh, foreigner community that seems to be there and uh, mm -hmm. the cool club where Patrick was playing with his band. Right, and um, I actually have a close friend living down in Busan. And um, since last year, we started developing this tradition of me visiting her every December. So, um, you know, we make fun memories during the winter time in Busan. And what I especially love about Busan is that um, it's got the ocean, it's got the mountains, and the people are also so friendly. And uh, do you know the uh, Busan dialect? Um, I have a buddy, <laughs> I have a foreigner who's really good at Busan dialect, actually. I mean, actually, it's so, so cool. Yeah, maybe I could pick up a little bit from him, but uh, what was that? Uh, Morakano. 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 <laughs> sarai ne sarai so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, do you like to visit Busan, Professor? Yes, I do. And to be honest, one of the first places I visited after I flew into Seoul was I went down to Busan a couple days later by train. Oh, okay. uh, All alone. It was my first time to just explore the country. Mm -hmm. And when I got down to Busan, I checked into a hotel. And at night, I was kind of bored. So I just thought, I'll go out and explore. And when I got out, I was just amazed at Busan. It's a whole different feeling than Seoul. It, it's so close and crowded and the mm -hmm. lights are everywhere and the streets are narrow and busy and the smells, the food. So yes. <laughs> it was the first place that I tried live octopus and I'll Ooh. never forget that when I went in and looked at them cooking the octopus and then trying to get out and then cutting up and everything moving and it was just amazing to eat live octopus. And also in your octopus. mouth? And when I, the first time they cut up the the fresh live octopus, yeah. and I tried to put it in my mouth, it would fight. Yeah. It fought on the way down, and I thought, this is just strange. Food's <laughs> not supposed to do that. But uh, I loved it. And I called my dad that night and told him about that, and he just laughed and <laughs> laughed. And, and he would never try that in a million years, but I enjoyed it greatly. Yeah, it is Good. quite tasty. And uh, Patrick is actually a professor at a university there in Busan. It seems like he's the type of teacher that the students could really get along oh. with, maybe even relate to a musician and a really cool guy. So Right, with his musical skills. I mean, he was a fantastic violinist. And uh, I do believe that music has the element of connecting people together. Do you like music, Professor? I love to listen to music. I envy him. I, I uh -huh. can't play an instrument oh. <laughs> if my life depended on it, but I love to listen to music. I listen to classical music all the time, and I like rock and roll as well. Ooh. So music brings out a lot of peace. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. And Sammy, you play the piano, don't you? I, I do play the piano. I majored in piano performance. Mm. Um, I saw her video on YouTube. Oh, man. Oh, she's, <laughs> really, really she's very good. good. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's continue on our journey once again to Busan with Patrick to see where his adventure takes him next. Another place that is dear to me and my wife is Jeju. We are planning to make a fresh start here. On Jeju Island, you can see lots of small volcanic cones called Odum. They have gentle slopes shaped by volcanic activities and take only 20 to 30 minutes to climb. As diverse as their shapes are the stories they have to tell. To enjoy the charm of Odom to the fullest, I recommend the tour programs run by locals. The gentle slopes of Odom are home to all kinds of living organisms. A guest house owner decided to accompany us. Odom tourism is what my wife and I will do for a living when we move to Jeju. Dump the trash in Odom. Ah. <laughs> 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 Yongnuni Odum, which translates to dragon's eyes, has beautiful slopes. It's a place of inspiration to many photographers and artists. Yeah. 
좌측으로 저 바닷가 쪽으로 보이는 게 저기 이제 우도입니다. 그래서 예. 이제 해가 뜨면 이제 저 가운데서 이제 일출이 올라오거든요. 그래서 여기 이렇게 풍광으로 해가지고 자, 우측은 상산 일출봉, 좌측은 우도 배경으로 해가지고 일출 사진 많이 찍어요. 여기가 이제 올라와야 이제 용릉 용으로 이제 보이는 거예요. 하고 저쪽에 이제 용의 머리, 그리고 몸통, 날개. 이렇게 이렇게 해가지고 용에 누워있는 모습을 닮았다 그래서 이렇게 이렇게 네. 제주 welcomes us with a different charm every time we visit. Sometimes it presents a humble bucolic landscape. Then at other times, it's shrouded in primordial mystery. Oh, this is a beautiful spot. I like it because we can see some of the courses that we walked. Like course one and then course two, how it all connects. But, 21 too. Yeah, 21 over there. It's just a gorgeous spot. Walking the walking the Ole Trail and hiking uh, just in autumn, it's a different experience for me. Sometimes, uh, sometimes on the walking trails, the the autumn is. Sometimes I don't really want to go on it. Uh, you know, we walked uh, 12 kilometers already, and oh, another hill. And we, you know, sometimes I just don't want to go, but I go up there, and it, it's very rewarding. Um, if it's an open top, you can look back and see, wow, we walked all of that today. This time we visited the island, not as tourists, but as its residents to be. First off, we will look around a guest house. This guest house is very popular among tourists for catering to their needs. This is a communal space, but it also has room for some privacy. The guest house offers a wide range of affordable services to tourists, such as odem tours, massages, and travel accessories. The owners of this house are three young men. They moved to Jeju because they were tired of the competitive life in big cities. <laughs> These guys may not be rich materialistically, but they've regained their happiness and reconnected with nature. However, to become a Jeju local, they too had to say goodbye to the familiar urban lifestyle they had led. 제주도를 여기 이제 내려오는 사람들을 저희는 이민자라 그래요. 제주 이민자라 그러거든요. 그래서 이민자들이 가장 힘들어하는 거는 마을 적응이에요. 그거 적응을 어떻게 하느냐에 따라서 가장 그게 가장 일순인 것 같고 정신적 스트레스는 도시에서 살았었을 때보다는 훨씬 더 적어요. 그러다 보니까 그게 참 좋은 것 같고. A serene evening on the island. Tired from all the walking and curious about the guest house service, we asked for a foot bath. Ooh, foot bath! Have you done that? I have actually. I've done it with wine in one certain area, 
of Korea where they had wine footbaths. Quite, quite refreshing, but that looks uh, refreshing as well. Yeah, I love having the footbath, especially after a long day of work. Have you done footbath, Professor? I've tried on to do that with my wife, but uh -huh. her feet are so awesome. ticklish. Oh. <laughs> Every time I try, she just screams. Oh, so, so, so that like would, this yeah, would that, she would oh, die that. right there. She, her foot would do a up chuggy. She would give me a, a kick. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think I would mind getting a foot massage from a lovely, uh, you know, if I had a husband. <laughs> <laughs>
감사합니다. 감사합니다. <웃음> 자꾸 뵙네요. 들으자 말이에요. 아유, 입술이야. 어서 들어오세요. 이제 다 보여. 예. 어, 그래도. 원주비시에서 한번 딱 결정하나. 그래서 이게 다 기둥이에요. 이게 음. 지금 요 기둥. 그 스폴 빔. 이게 빔이거든. 여기서 이 빔을 그냥 두기는 너무 흉해서 이렇게 막으면 이쁘지 않아요. 저쪽 집도 그래서 막은 음. 거거든요. Has a bunk bed. Yeah. It's sharing with like smallest four to like twelve right. people. Right. Yeah. This is more private than those kind of uh, bunk beds. Probably houses. more comfortable too, because yeah. yeah. nobody, well, most. I don't like to be on this, the top bunk, top, yeah. so I assume many people don't. Mm. It's really nice to find the window. Yeah. Oh, it's too cold, but it's really nice to see the sun. It's so cold. 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 Oh, yeah, that's cold. Our staff members are We discovered this place by chance, but now? We've made a very special connection. Yeah, we're coming. We're coming to Jeju-do because, well, we're happy anyway. Yeah. But. We're not coming here to be happy. We're coming here to experience a new life. And enjoy the nature. Yeah. And meet some more new people. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're already happy. Yeah. <laughs> 정화 씨 같은 경우는 더 유리할 수도 있어요. 내가 보기에 외국인들이 올 만한 게스트하우스 그렇게 흔치 않고 이왕이면 한국적이면서도 좀 뭔가 이렇게 편한 데를 원하시잖아, 그분들이. 제 경우에 정화 씨처럼 이렇게 오시면 편해요. 근데 이렇게 두분다 한국말 잘 못하시는 분 오시면 제가 너무 조심스럽고 그러면 그게 그분들한테 안 편하거든. Well, thing in in my mind was a traditional style place with um, maybe three buildings and a courtyard, so they're kind of connected, but not directly. So we can live very close to the guests. That, that's my one idea I had. Mm. I don't know, would they, would they be comfortable with us all the time? <laughs> Not sure. It's a little bit of a problem. It's too much. 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 It won't be easy leaving Busan, but we're also excited about meeting new neighbors here. We visited a seaside cafe where an interesting concert was to take place. It's house concert day, which is held once a year. On weekends, this cafe holds jazz recitals for music fans who come here to socialize. I, I, I think it's very interesting to attend a concert in a cafe like this. Because um, this building, it looks like an old farm uh, warehouse. So it's a part of Jeju, and seeing a concert here it makes me feel a lot better uh, than a regular concert hall, more comfortable. <laughs> There's music on Jeju Island. My music, too, will become deeper here. the sounds of uh, last piano tunes in the Serene Islands Cafe. Absolutely, that sort of 
beautiful melody is the perfect way to cap off <laughs> a perfect evening on Jeju Island. Yeah, and I love those uh, guest houses. Those were really cute and pretty. And, um, you know, while I was backpacking Europe, I, I stayed in guest houses as well. But I've never stayed in guest houses in Jeju Island. So yeah, now either. that um, seeing all these uh, interesting uh, guest places, I would like to go visit. Oh, too. I they can see stars at night. Yeah. I was so impressed there are stars. So I just, I miss those so much. And it looks like there are so many interesting local people uh, forming mm. these little towns. You know, they are, uh, I guess they are tired of the busy, you know, bustling pace of Seoul and they wanted to start a new life, slower paced in this beautiful uh, natural environment. Right, it's a very tight knit community it seems and it seems like everybody knows each other and it's of course the people in countryside places like that are so warm and friendly. And, yeah. you know, the more you learn about Jeju Island, the more you want to know. So why don't we take a look at today's travel story, travel tips, all about Jeju Island. Patrick and his wife are a beautiful couple who knows how to enjoy life. Jeju Island, where the couple wants to settle down, attracts more than 2 million tourists each year. It's a prime tourist destination in Korea. So now let's take a look at how you can make your stay in Jeju unforgettable. If you plan on visiting Jeju someday, don't miss our travel tips. So here's our first tip. It sounds a bit wild, but you can go actually hunting. Get on an all-terrain vehicle and drive across the vast plains. You can try clay pigeon shooting or hunt quails. If you're looking for something more dynamic, just hit the beach. You can go kite surfing or horseback riding right along the beach overlooking the beautiful Songsan Sunset Peak. I can already hear the romantic sound of the sea waves in my ears. Next up, tips for enjoying the nights on Jeju Island. Jeju is even more beautiful after the sun goes down. You can try a firefly program offered to nighttime hikers on Hala Mountain. But remember that the glowing fireflies can only be seen when the air is crystal clean. There are also starlight tours offered by guest houses and, and hotels. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to gaze at myriad stars right above your head. I hope you will use these tips someday when you travel to Jeju. And now let's get back to Patrick and his wife and hear more about their preparations for the second chapter of their lives. The whole Jeju Island is like a museum of volcanoes. It's home to 360 odum and some 160 lava caves. In 2007, it was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The odum are a must-see for every traveler. To enjoy Jeju's unique landscape, take the Ole Trail Tour that encompasses the ocean, the mountains, and the people. The word Ole means narrow valley. There are 26 Ole trails along the coastline, crisscrossing villages and covering mountain slopes. Together, they create a beautiful collage of Jeju. It's a Jeju Ole passport, and you can get one of these. Actually, you need two of them to complete um, all the courses. So all the courses have a beginning, a middle stamp station, and an end. And every time you reach one of these blue horses or blue ponies, pull out the stamp and stamp it, and you can prove that you completed the course. One more. And there we are. My wife and I decided to try out Route 10. Um, some advice for foreigners walking on the Ole. Um, well, number one, greet everybody. It's very easy. You can say, Annyeonghaseyo, or you can say, Pangapsumida. Greet everybody. Um, it makes 
it makes them feel good it makes you feel good and maybe if you're lucky you'll get some trail magic maybe you'll get some water or a snack or some mandarins which we got a lot of one year This is our fourth time on uh, Course 10, and I think it's our fourth season as well. We keep coming back because it has so many exciting things on it. It has everything. It's like a greatest hits of all the Ole trails, I think. And it's different every time. Uh, the weather's different and even even the route is different. Every time it's it's different and I still get a thrill when I when I look across and see what's coming ahead. Course 10, and Course 10 has a lot of interesting things. In the background, there's a uh, Sangbang San that will uh, dominate the landscape for a long time, most of the day. There some, there's a fascinating beach up ahead. Uh, the, the rock formations are just out of this world. It's like on another planet. was course five? Five. Yeah, course five. It started from Namwon. That was the first time we ever did Olegil and uh, And we fell in love. Yeah, we, we fell in love with the Olegil immediately on that trip. Um, I think the biggest reason is we, we came during the summertime and it was a beautiful sunny day and we were walking along the rocky coastline and I think about an hour and a half in we uh, we looked at the water and we looked at a tiny patch of sand at like a private beach. We just looked at each other, didn't say a word, and we ducked behind some rocks and changed into our bathing suits and took a swim. I did a little bit of traveling by myself, but not much. Um, and I think with Zhonghua, I finally met the perfect travel partner. So <laughs> we'll take many, many more trips together. Songak San is a uh, personal favorite for me. It has special meaning because um, maybe three years ago, my parents came to visit. We brought them to Jeju-do, and my father, he's always been excited about Jeju-do, and one of his uh, bucket list items was to see a crater. My father was 79 at the time, and he, he was getting over a hip injury, so it was a bit of a struggle for him, but we made it, and the, uh, the view was, was great, and just to see the smile on my father's face, it really felt good. J. 
Tedju forests have been preserved in their primordial state. Taking a leisurely stroll here is a sweet treat for the tired soul. Sorry, I think I'm a terrible nature guy. No, you're not. I can identify one kind of tree. Yeah. We have, we have Good local food is another charm of Olay yeah, Tours. When you're absorbed in the beautiful environment, hunger pangs go by unnoticed. But this restaurant is a must try. Spicy instant noodles with fresh seafood is unforgettable. Seafood jun is like a Korean style pizza. They taste the best when eaten with traditional rice wine makgeolli. Ole tours are ideal for discovering the charm and taste of Jeju. This gallery was the studio of a photographer who had a special connection to Jeju. He only took pictures of Jeju people and natural landscape while living on the island for 20 years. He built the gallery himself before he passed away. Everything in this gallery shows how much the photographer loved Jeju. His name was Kim Young Gap. He worked here for six years after he was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. All his works are about Jeju. After its opening in 2002, the gallery quickly gained popularity among tourists. It's just flat and then you see this hump. Right. And then you can just see everything around it. But there's a very different look at it. It looks like two different places back yeah, there. Yeah, it's almost yeah. not recognizable. Mm. Kim Young Gap put his life into his photos. That is how he captured the years and stories of Jeju. Today, um, on your order, I definitely felt the wind that uh, Kim Young-gap was able to photograph. That sounds strange, photographing wind, but 
<laughs> but that, I could feel that today on the autumn. Um, yeah, that, that was the biggest feeling for me. I left my family to come to Korea, and then I have a new family in Busan. Now I'm moving to Jeju, so I, I'm a little scared about that, but uh, it worked out very well for me in Busan, so I think it'll work out well in Jeju-do. The most precious moment in our lives is now. We dream of a new life on Jeju Island. Your turn. Oh, um, it's part of our life. Every time when we come back from trip, we of course we're happy to be home, but in a few weeks already we talk about next trip. Yeah. So it's the biggest part of our life is traveling, I think. That's it. Really? Yeah. Come on me. Oh, I'm a minger. You're a minger too. Here we go. So come on me. I want to be with you. Hello sunshine. Come into my life. Hello sunshine. Come into my life. What's next? I'm a the minger. minger. <laughs> You're We're a minger too. So come I'm on, minger. minger. I want to ming with you. Well, that is so awesome to see Patrick approaching the new <coughs> chapter in his life with such a PMA, positive mental Ew. attitude. <laughs> and that is a philosophy I also embrace in my own life mm -hmm. when facing challenges, hardships, or changes in a new chapter in life. Definitely, and um, what I loved about their trip is that I think they're very well prepared for their second chapter in life. I mean, they've traveled all the way to Jeju Island, met people over there, and consulted, um, and they've, they're doing their research there. And um, I think I'm very much looking forward to what's going to happen in their uh, second life in Jeju Island. What, what did you think of their trip? I too am looking forward to their chapter three, so to speak. <laughs> I, I guess I hope they stay the course. Mm -hmm. I hope they don't get discouraged. You know, there's going to be times I think that they're going to get lonely there, perhaps, or things will be a right. little too quiet, or it'll be maybe difficult at times. But mm -hmm. I think that you're right. The PMA is going to get them through a lot of that, and so I just hope they keep going. And I hope I can visit their place someday yeah, and talk with them. Oh, them personally. Them okay, personally, I would because I'm going to Jeju someday. Right. You can say, hey, so, I was there watching you guys I on Travel so. Story. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. Well, I think also the transition from Busan to Jeju is probably a little easier than moving from, say, Seoul, because you're already experienced right. with the coastal life, living by the ocean, that and is Busan's true. a little bit smaller, so the transition will hopefully be easier for them. Right, and uh, yes. was your transition from from the United States to Korea, was, was it also difficult? Yes, there were some difficulties, but I have to be honest, I, I like what Jesse says. Mm -hmm. Positive attitude is something I also like to work at. Mm -hmm. right. I, I believe that just is so useful. And it got me through a lot here because mm -hmm. there are big differences between my home in America and my new home in Korea. But there's so many wonderful things that you just keep looking for new things to enjoy and more will come. So. Right. That is excellent words of wisdom. And we hope that today on Travel Story, we've been able to give you 
a positive mental attitude. That's all the time we have for today. <laughs> well, till the next time, stay healthy and we'll be back with more inspiring stories. And uh, please leave us your comments on Travel Story, uh, Arirang TV's website. Thank you. Bye. Bye.